All right, peace, family, and assalamu alaikum, and welcome back to the STEM Files, where we serve as the voice of STEM talent and Black culture. In tonight's episode, we're going to be talking with our brother, uh, electrical engineer and uh, general contractor, Kevin Champion. We're going to be talking about how to secure government contracts, becoming a building facilities engineer, and ownership in engineering. The STEM Files, were real big on ownership when it comes to STEM. So tonight's going to be a really, really heavy focus on uh, ownership and in engineering and how to keep everything, you know, not everything in your control, but the, the bulk of your work in your control. So peace. So family, stay tuned for more after this. You believe in these false prophets? I say I'm Betty Lyon. Betty Lyon. No football, New York City Giants. Girl, dad, rest in peace to Kobe Bryant. When we teaching our babies, we teach them heavy science. Heavy science. Heavy science. Heavy science. Heavy science. When we teaching our women, we teach them heavy science. Heavy science. Heavy science. Heavy science. When we teach men, we teach them. Once again, thank you all for tuning in. And as our opening intro says, we teach heavy science. On uh, tonight's episode, we are joined by our brother, Kevin Champion. First and foremost, I'm one half of your co-host, Tariq Mohammed, AKA Tariq Cardiac. I am a biomedical research scientist with a concentration in cardiovascular pathobiology, which is the study of how diseases form in the heart and blood vessels. I'm typically joined by my right hand, the engineering half of the host. Now I want y'all to now family before I introduce my no, never mind. I'm gonna introduce my brother down. I'm gonna get to my point. But he's a Jabril Mohammed, aka Jabril engineer. He's a civilian mechanical engineer with the United States Navy, working on those big fancy ships that you see out at sea. Now this is an engineering episode, right? So yes, y'all gotta inbox my brother real quick and ask him why he is not on the screen right now for an engineering episode when he's the engineer. Yeah, <laughs> all right, family, but it's all good. <laughs> right, right. He's here with us in spirit. He knows I'm playing with him, but we love him. Uh, we look forward to having him back on when he's able to. But family, uh, once again, this is the STEM Files. We serve as the voice of STEM talent and Black culture. If you're on social media, please follow us at all our social media pages at Tariq Cardiac, at your brain engineer. Follow us at STEM Files on Instagram and Twitter, Facebook and YouTube, as well as TikTok. We're going to be building up our TikTok page. But that's enough about us. Tonight's show Every show is about the people that we have on. Uh, tonight's guest is somebody I've been trying to get on the STEM files for like, like six, seven years now. <laughs> you know, we always just been missing each other, but our brother's finally here with us, Mr. Kevin Champion. Assalamu alaikum, sir. How you doing, bro? Alex Salaam, brother. Thank you so much for having me on. Absolutely, absolutely. It's all the definitely the honor is all ours. Um, we're going to be talking a lot about ownership, a lot about securing government contracts, how to. Uh, solidify yourself as an engineer in business, you know, yes, when sir. it comes to general contracting, electrical engineering, or what have you. Mm -hmm. So before mm -hmm. we get started, tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got involved in uh, MEQ, and what exactly is the, the goal of your company? Okay. Again, as you know, my name is uh, Kevin Champion. I'm you know, born and raised in Atlanta. So I went to school here in, um, in DeKalb County, uh, high school, and Ended up going to Morehouse College and um, going to uh, okay. Georgia Tech. Yep, yep. So we got a little bit of HBCU experience. Yes, sir. Always, <laughs> always. <laughs> so it was just, it was definitely vital and, and a must-have. Um, I think I got the best of both worlds, you know, going to an HBCU and then uh, to a, a larger, uh, you know, pretty much uh, world-renowned <laughs> engineering yeah. college like, like Georgia Tech. So 
Um, that was right. a perfect, perfect balance for me as far as my educational career. And so um, I studied uh, physics at Morehouse, and then I studied uh, electrical engineering at Georgia Tech. Uh, participated in the dual degree program, um, basically get, you know, two degrees in, in five years, uh, both bachelor's degrees, and then uh, ended up going back to Georgia Tech and getting a uh, master's degree in building construction management, which uh, really paired well with uh, my profession as a um, professional electrical engineer. Okay. Um, yep. So basically, um, <laughs> I, you know, was was pretty much born to be an engineer. I pretty much had the, the engineering knack, you know. I like growing, that. Yeah. So growing up, I you know tinker tinker with all types of um, devices. I was the the go to person in my family for putting together, you know, any type of uh, furniture or electronics. They would always go to me. So um, you know, my mom and my parents saw that engineering knack in me and uh, tried to help you know develop that pretty early on. Um, and so uh, once I you know got into to college, I was able to to focus you know, on the engineering disciplines. Um, I chose electrical because you know most of the mechanical um, devices I could kind of see and understand, but uh, electrical engineering was kind of that that black box that I wanted to really get into and see how that worked. So that's you know the reason why I chose um, that discipline of engineering. And so um, my I guess fourth or fifth year at Tech, I had a class where there was a professor who uh, he drove down from Tennessee. He actually owned a firm, you know, similar to mine, uh, which is a um, a building facilities engineering firm. And so once I had that class and realized that, wow, you know, I could actually be an entrepreneur and combine, you know, my talents and the things I like to do, which was, you know, drawing um, along with the engineering, I think it was uh, kind of a match made in heaven for me. That's what's up. That's what's up. And you said something very important. Um, you know, I don't know if you caught caught our last episode with uh, Brother Victor, um, but one of the things he mentioned was that you have to be born to be a scientist, right? Mm -hmm. And you said you right. were born to be an engineer. When did you realize you were born to be something? You know, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teaches us that blessed are those who find their purpose in life, right? right. So how did you know? What moment did you realize, okay, this is what you were born to do? I think, um, you know, I, I, I realized I had, you know, skill sets in mathematics early on, like in elementary school. Um, I, I excelled at math. Uh, my mom was a English teacher. And so I knew that you know, I could write, <laughs> but um, I knew that wasn't my passion. You know, so I think when I really started to figure out uh, that I was just good at math was, you know, maybe fifth or fourth or fifth grade. And then going into high school, um, in my favorite class was physics. Mm -hmm. And so and I, I took AP physics in high school and, you know, I was in the AP mathematics classes, calculus. Um, and so towards my senior year in high school, I realized that, OK, um, I like physics. And I like math. But, you know, physics really teaches you how the the, the earth works, <laughs> you know. Um, and so it's it's kind of a applied math and applied science. Um, and I, I like trying to figure out, you know, how, um, you know, how to understand trajectory of a ball, for instance, or, um, you know, force equations and just kind of understanding how the universe works, basically. And so, um, you know, with that understanding in, you know, my junior, senior year in high school, I started to kind of look around and see, okay, now what do I really want to focus on in college? Um, and, and also prior to to the high school, my mom put me in some some architectural drafting courses when I was maybe um, 10 or 11. And mm. so I, I knew that, you know, I, I had a skill set of drawing. I, I like to draw the architectural class, you know, helped me understand I could use that to to draw buildings. And so um, as I plan on going into into college, um, I knew that I wanted to be an engineer. But I didn't know specifically exactly which uh, area of engineering I wanted to go go into, and so what also helped me right. So what also helped me uh, determine engineering was was doing internships. So I, I definitely highly recommend um, even you know maybe junior senior year in high school to start you know doing internships so you can actually see what the profession is all about. 
And so um, there was a program called En-ROADS, which was for, um, you know, Black and uh, Hispanic um, students that was really helpful because uh, it, it would place you with um, different companies uh, for internships. And they also had, you know, training courses on how to dress, you know, uh, etiquette on the job. And so that was really helpful. Um, I was placed with Motorola and uh, Lucent Technologies at some of my internships. And it was, you know, big corporation, you know, for me, I felt like I, like I got lost as a number. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. <laughs> working at these big corporations. And, you know, I, I realized that, you know, in, in some of these professions, you know, like working in Bell Labs for Motorola, it was, you know, high end R&D. And you mm -hmm. have to have a lot of money to, to really um, own a lab, you know. Right. And so um, that internship experience helped me see, okay, well, I also had a knack for entrepreneurship. You know, I would make things and sell things in high school. So pretty much all three of those combinations of enjoying drawing, definitely liking physics and, you know, kind of having a knack for engineering as well as entrepreneurship kind of helped me kind of hone in on exactly, you know, where I wanted to, to be as an engineer. That's what's up. That's what's up. And, and I'm glad mm -hmm. you were able to, to put all those different things together to, to come to a conclusion that, you know, this is, uh, this this could be the thing that I use to not only spend the rest of my time doing, spend the rest of my life doing, but you know, provide for my family, you right. know, make a difference in my community, the whole nine. Um, before we continue, family, um, I wanted to give a quick shout out to DC Young Fly. Uh, to anybody who watches Wild and Out or familiar with his work, uh, he just recently uh, lost the mother of his children, uh, Jackie O. She is longtime partner of his mother of his three children and she recently transitioned today uh, i'm not exactly sure why but uh just please keep your prayers and, and well wishes to him and his family um in this time i just wanted to do that real quick because i'm a fan of dc i've, I've always loved uh his his his, his comedy and his in his content so uh yeah. may Allah be pleased with with his All right. um, prayers and streams to that part. brother and family yep Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So let's get back into it. You know, we're talking about, you know, business and engineering. We're talking about, uh, you know, where you are, how you, how you got started in engineering, how you became interested in engineering as a child. And then now you're here, you know, so in your, in your college days, right. You know, we have organizations like Nesby, uh, other, Black organizations that help uh, not only train Black engineers for future careers, but also support them in whatever they do. So have you personally, or can you speak to the Black engineering student in the HBCU? Can you speak to any of the difficulties that a Black student may face studying engineering? And how can they overcome these things, seek the support that they need, and eventually become what they set out to be. Yeah, I can speak a little bit about that. Um, like I said, I uh, was a student at Morehouse College, and um, that's, that school had a 3-2 program. So, so basically, the students that were on the engineering track would have you know, a Morehouse um, degree and then the Georgia Tech degree. And so really, you're kind of packing two degrees in five years. So, you know, the biggest and obvious thing are just, you know, being on an HBCU campus. I mean, there's, you know, you know, parties and games and all types of extracurricular activities that go on, you know, at normal colleges. So the biggest oh, yeah. thing. I, I, I remember <laughs> the Virginia State University days, trust, trust and believe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My, the homecoming is a thing. So, I mean, you can have a lot of fun and, you know, um, that's the biggest thing for, I think for, you know, most, you know, freshmen coming on to campus, uh, being able to stay focused and, and, and understand that, yeah, you can, you can, you can enjoy yourself, but it's, it's really, you got to focus and, uh, get your, get your books, um, uh, handled while, while you're there and while you're, while you're also partying and enjoying the, 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 the campus. So, um, that was the main thing for me, um, and, and many students, I, I think, uh, just the college campus distractions. And, you know, I think people, um, you know, here the, the top professions, oh, I want to be a lawyer or a doctor or an engineer. 
And I don't know, we really know what that means, you know, as freshmen, most of us coming into school. So I had a lot of guys who, you know, may have chose that career, but didn't really know what it, <laughs> it meant to be an engineer and, and the, the challenges of, um, of the curriculum. So um, I, I think definitely finding a core group of guys for me at Morehouse and, and, and young ladies to study with was, was big. You know, I, I think, um, you know, just partner, partnering up with 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 other classmates and um, like I said, getting a good study group and staying diligent and making sure you, you understand the material uh, was a was a big thing. Got you. Got you. Hey, you, you that environment, the HBCU environment is 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 designed to do two things. It's meant to. Well, its original concept was meant to uplift the black student. That was its original concept. Right. It's gone in many different directions since its inception. But the one thing that, that is consistent throughout all these HBCUs is the party environment, the have a good time environment. You know, it's a bunch of black people mm -hmm. who are away, young black people who are away from their parents, right. usually out in another state you know, studying something that's hella hard. <laughs> right. So when they're around their um their fam when they're around their their fellow students or or what have you, they are just off the chain. You know, they yeah. just they want they want to be they want the break from the mental, you know. Yeah. So what did some of the things that you did to 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 fortify your mental while you were studying? Um, I, I know you mentioned in, in addition to, I know you mentioned, you know, being around like-minded individuals, studying with, with people that you, you rock with, but what did you personally do, you know, regardless of anything that no matter what happens, I'm going to get this degree and, and get to help my people. Yeah. I mean, particularly uh, for my personality and, and my upbringing, I, I don't think I necessarily, you know, had any real strategies other than, you know, I, I was, you know, reared by a mother who, you know, had a huge value in education. And yes. so I definitely didn't want to disappoint her. Um, right. And I just had a, 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 the will to really, you know, be successful. And, you know, um, I enjoyed what I was doing and I just had the the desire to, to push through and to lock in. Um, I have, you know, friends today who I've known since I was, you know, three or four years old playing t-ball and we went to kindergarten, high school, elementary school, and then more house together. And, you know, they're lawyers and, you know, some of those other, I would say maybe soft science or political science type, <laughs> type, type degrees, you know, especially, you know, in undergrad, you know, they get a lot tougher when they get to grad school and in law school, but for them, they could party a lot more than I could, you know? And so for me, one of the things I had to do was tell them no. Like, so I, I mean, nine out of 10 times they say, Hey champ, you know, here's a party. Let's go. You know, we're going to, they're going to continue with, continuously ask me to come out because they're my brothers, <laughs> but I have to tell <laughs> them, course, you know, right. nine, out of, nine out of 10 times, you know, I can't go. But that one time I, I could go, they welcomed me and we had a good time. So um, you just have right. to know, you know, have, have discipline um, and be able to say, say no, you know, when you know you have to study and, and understand that, you know, the sciences, you know, definitely build upon each other. So if you, you know, don't do so well in a math class, it might be, trouble for you in the, in the next math class, you know, so um, just understanding that, you know, you have to have to say no sometimes to to, to your friends on, on the, the extracurricular activities. Absolutely. And, you know, and in, in, in the end, you know, they'll they'll definitely respect you for that. Right. You know, there, there's never uh, if, for anybody who's watching, if you have a brother or somebody, people that you're close to and you tell them that, look, you can't do something and they treat you differently because of that and not your brother so yeah, you exactly. being that age like 18 to 22 that age group and being able to recognize who your brothers are as young men who, who are coming into manhood right that's key right there so yeah. key. so let's 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 get to the meat you know we talking about you know securing government contracts so you know i mentioned i know you texted me you know you, you said that uh you know you there are more there are people more qualified to talk about, you know, government contracting specifically, you know, right. in depth, right? Mm -hmm. But getting a contract is more than just getting government contracts. Getting a contract is very important. Period with anything, right? So with ME Cube in, in your in your engineering firm, 
what is the first step that you take to get a contract with a city, a, another company or what have you to build something for them? Or is it something that they, do they come to you and ask you, look, hey, hey, can you build this for us? Or is it a combination of both? Yeah, it's, uh, some people may not like the answer, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> this, this profession is definitely not microwavable. You know, you have mm. to put in your time. I mean, it's, it's not, you know, social media from the standpoint of being able to jump on and, and, and start overnight. And right. definitely, you know, working with municipalities to get government contracts, it's, it's, it's you know, serious business. And so, I, you know, I've seen companies who, who jump out and, you know, who, who may have retired from, you know, an engineering profession, say, working as a, you know, um, uh, an engineer at, at a factory or a facility and, you know, retiring, retiring from there and then jumping right out as a, they call them, you know, minority vendors. And, and asking for, for government contracts and, and not being successful. So, you know, to me, when you ask about the first thing you really need to do in order to get contracts and to basically su successfully com complete a project is learn the profession. Right. Um, it, it may seem like because these projects, you know, um, government contracts are out there and they do have pro contracts that are quote unquote set asides for, for minority vendors. Um, you still have to know how to complete the project. So, right. you know, so for me, uh, my first step was really learning the profession. And so as, a, as an engineer, um, when you come out of school, you have some knowledge base of, 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 of what you are um, going to be asked to do in this profession. Um, me, particularly, I had a class that specifically was uh, centered around building facilities engineering. So the professor I mentioned earlier had a had a book and basically laid it out step for step. You know, for me as an electrical engineer, I, I designed you know power distribution systems for buildings. So this class taught me how to lay out receptacles, how to lay out lighting, how to lay out panel boards, and that whole process. So I had some inclination of what I would be asked to do when I got my first job. But even on the job, you know, there's still a lot of learning to do. So to me, the first step again is, is get your degree, get a job, and basically work um, under a professional engineer, which was required to eventually uh, sit for your PE license, which gives you the credibility to actually go after a government contract as, a, as an engineer or to provide engineering services. And that process is that you have to uh, serve as a... Uh, a um, Kind of a uh, it's basically working under a, a PE, and okay. um, yep, and so uh, an so as, so as a an so as a general con right right so in order to be a general contractor you have to work under yeah no in order to be a a, a professional engineer mm -hmm. you have to you know graduate from a accredited university um, in engineering and then you have to be a an apprentice basically under okay. under a licensed professional engineer for four years. And uh, they suggest that uh, prior to graduating, you take what they call, I think it's either the uh, FE, a fundamental of engineering exam, which gives you the basically the first exam to qualify you to take the professional engineer's exam after you get four years of experience. Gotcha. Okay. And so, so once you once you get that four years of experience, um, then you can sit for your PE. And even then, you might need three or four more years as a <laughs> licensed PE, taking full responsibility for the entire design of a project. So you know from A to Z how to design whatever systems you're designing, whether it be HVAC, plumbing, electrical systems. So once you get that experience, which might be maybe a, you know, I would say five to eight year process for some people. <laughs> Um, I, I did get my PE and I was kind of you know moonlighting, um, working with a previous company that I worked with around year five or six. And gotcha. I, you know, um, basically incorporated my company after five or six years of experience of getting my PE. And so, um, you know, I'm going through steps, you know, four, five and six. But the first <laughs> step, like again, is, is to learn the profession. Okay. Got you, got you. So you you're learning the profession. You you're getting to know the ins and outs of uh, how to 
you know, first and foremost, know exactly how to build something and whatever it is that you're building, be a professional at it or gain the necessary qualifications to, to carry out a, a specific function, right? Right. So now we're moving on to, you know, I'm the president of Chick-fil-A, right? And I want your company, MEQ, to build, I don't know, three, three new lo locations in Clayton County. You know, now the only reason I'm familiar with Clayton County because I used to live in Georgia, but that's not the yeah, we, <laughs> but we do, lot, we do a lot of work in Clayton County. So yeah, shout out to Clay Go. Right. Um, exactly. but right, right. So I'm in I'm in Clayton County, you know, I got three locations I'm I'm looking at. I'm I want to offer this contract to you so that you can build out these particular facilities. What's what's the next step? So I'm sitting down with you. What what are we doing? Yeah, so that's that's commercial. And so, you know, that, that gets into really who you know, that gets into, mm. you know, doing for self and being able to, again, um, have that network that right. that president at, at, that, um, at Chick-fil-A, it, it may be, I'm not sure if they're franchise owned, I believe. Yeah, I think they're franchise. Yeah, yeah. so, um, you know, we've, we've done Smoothie Kings, we've done some, you know, some uh, commercial uh, fast food joints <laughs> to say and so the, the franchisee will you know pretty much uh you know if he knows you personally he'll reach out directly to you you know and and and, and that's pretty much how that happens it's more of a who you know and having that connection and basically um them knowing that you can do the pro do the work and then give them a good fee for it so you know when you talk about you know separation and doing for self and getting those projects on a private level that's some of our our biggest challenges because how many of, of us you know mm. are to play franchises franchisees mm. right. how many of us can just pick up the phone and say hey you know um i need you to come and do a seventy thousand square foot amazon shipping facility for me okay let's 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 flip it a little bit so mm -hmm. i'm not i'm google now <laughs> i'm not franchising I'm Google. I want to set up. A, I want to build an a office space in uh, Fulton County somewhere, right? So I'm. I'm. I have this this plot of land. I'm. I'm not franchising. I'm. I'm the actual company. I'm the president or in charge of building or what have you. And I'm sitting down with you and I'm asking, okay, so what, what's what's that first interact or that first step in that interaction? Again, that's that's networking. I mean, okay. you know. Um, as you build your company, I mean, something like a, a Google, you know, um, facility is, is on the larger end of, of projects, I, I would say. And mm -hmm. so that's going to be probably be more of your larger engineering firms who are more established 50, 60 years in the game. And gotcha. so they probably called or went and sat down and had meetings with a Google or some of these bigger companies and said, hey, you know, if I don't know you personally, let Let's sit down and let, give me an interview. Let me let me talk to you and let you know we can do the job. Here's our past performance. You know, here's our mm -hmm. fees. You know, we can be on schedule. You know, I, I would say engineering firms are probably more marketing to these companies versus these companies just um, reaching out to engineering firms per se um, to do the to do the work. Um, but but if like you said, if, if someone did have a facility and they knew of a firm that they had a good reputation. They just pick up the phone, say, hey, you know, we're doing this project, you know, president to president. Are you guys interested in doing our facility? Uh, this is the scope. Give me a fee and and let's rock out, you know. But again, that's a, a person to person, you know, that's a, and it's not just about money. As, as we know, it's it's a relationship. <laughs> and right, so, right. you know, and so there's a lot of factors that go into that, that uh, winning, uh, getting that project or, or having that the business owner give you that work absolutely all right i want to elevate a comment uh to bro me minority contractors have a proven track have a proven track record and be aggressive in submitting bids for contracts the government i even or the navy you know for example the navy has placed emphasis on small businesses getting contracts you know and that last sentence small businesses getting contracts right what are some of the things, uh, and you uh, you mentioned networking, you mentioned uh, being able to set up a good relationship with certain companies, right? But if 
there's a small business and then there's a larger business. What would a small business need to do to become a bigger business? Just just the track record, just constantly uh, cranking out good work, or is it or is it something extra that they may need to do? Uh, good question. Um, you know, I, I think uh, just you know from the outside looking in, because we, we're still a small company, and from my you know conversations with you know, larger companies and people who have been willing to share some some advice and information and maybe even just kind of seeing the history of some of these larger companies. Um, I, I think it's a, it's a, it's a process. It's over time, you know. Um, I think many of the firms that I, that I know of that are doing larger government contracts are pretty much, like I said, 50, 60 years um, of existence. And so those right. companies may have started off with one or two, two guys, you know, in their basement doing the work, and just over time, over the years, built a reputation, um, built a network, brought on partners, um, were able to acquire talent. Um, you know, I've known companies who have the presidents have been of the companies have been, you know, friends and associates of the president of the United States, and so they could just they could pick up the phone and get a large government contract. And so that, that helps in building, building your company. So okay. you know, for me, you know, uh, in my mind, I think it's, it's time. And, you know, for us, it, it'll happen in this day and time. Um, it'll be finding the right people. Um, basically, you know, find six like-minded people <laughs> and right. together, basically, and, 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 and stay committed you know, to that company and, um, and just, and, and do good work over time. And I, I think it'll, it, it should happen. I mean, that's, that's my hope, you know? Excellent. Excellent. Okay, cool. Cool. So we had the 30 minute Mark family. Uh, it's time to do that final call newspaper plug. So family, I'm going to go ahead and uh, talk about the final call newspaper and then we'll get right back to the show. So check it out. <laughs> Now you can get the same uncompromising truth you've come to expect from the Final Call newspaper on all your connected devices. Subscribe to the Final Call Digital Edition today. Go to subscribe.finalcalldigital.com. Peace. This is Naya Mohammed, a future architect. The STEM Files. All right, family, welcome back to the STEM Files. And once again, shout out to Naya Muhammad, who actually just recently graduated um, from college with her degree in uh, architecture. She is she is now uh, she now has a degree in architecture, but she, of course, she'll eventually go on to become um a professional on that and of course there's some additional trainings for that so definitely, definitely congratulations to that sister and right. look forward to having her in the, in the field yes. and let's link up in the future for sure for sure all right family in this week's edition of the final call newspaper is remembering two legends the final call reflects on the legacies impact and contributions of two influential luminaries the comparable tina turner the incomparable tina turner and the iconic Jim Brown family, if you would like this particular issue of the Final Call newspaper, please visit finalcalldigital.com. Uh, once again, it's finalcalldigital.com, or or you can you know tap in with myself here. And if you're watching this from Richmond, Virginia, or anywhere in the DMV area, please reach out to your brother. Or if you're in the Philadelphia area, please reach out to the other half of the co-host, uh, Jabril Muhammad. He'll get you straight up there in Philly. Um, and if you're in Atlanta. You know, I'm sure my brother can make sure that you get uh, a Final Call newspaper. Uh, if you'd like to follow the Final Call on social media, it's at Final Call newspaper. Once again, it's at Final Call newspaper. We lost our, we lost two triple OGs, two people who mean so much to Black culture. Uh, both of these individuals uh, have laid a path that it'll take many of us years upon years, decades upon decades to match. May Allah be pleased with them and we appreciate all of their works. 
let's get back to the program. Uh, there is a question that uh, Jabril had. Let's let's go. Let's get into the contracts, right? So we're talking about securing government contracts, securing contracts in general. What does a good contract look like? You know, I know you've seen some some stuff uh, that that may be a little questionable, but to you, when you when you see a good agreement between you and another entity, what are some of the things that you would want to see in that contract? Without giving the details, of course, that you see. Um. So so where we are on contracting, um, you know, we are you know a, a smaller firm at this point, and so, um, you know, you asked about the first step to getting government contracts. I think a, a later on step for us has been since we, you know, work for and with majority firms, um, we built a reputation and a relationship with majority firms. And so um, these firms are basically performing as the prime contractor on a lot of government projects. So they will be actually submitting proposal responses. And uh, City of Atlanta has probably one of the, the best programs for small businesses and you know, minority businesses in which they, they require a certain percentage go to actual African-American owned businesses or female owned businesses, small businesses. Uh, you mentioned Clayton County. Um, we're doing five or six fire stations right now for, for Clayton County. Nice, uh, nice. Of, yeah, we, thank you. Appreciate it. We, <clears throat> we've done rec centers. We've done so much work in Clayton County. And so we're also participating as a mentor protege, uh, as a, you know, a protege in their mentor protege uh, program right now in Clayton County. And so, um, you know, as a, a protege or as a, as a, as a, um, a sub on these contracts, our contracts are usually directly with the prime contractor. And so some of our, you know, majority firms uh, will add us on their team <clears throat> to handle the MEP, mechanical electrical plumbing engineering. And so, you know, we'll contract directly with them. And so, you know, typically what I like to see in those contracts are just um, just basically, you know, treat us how they're being treated by by the prime client, which could be Clayton County or the the um, the municipality in, in that, you know, allow us to you know perform our work you know, from our offices, right, um, right. You know, give us, um, you know, competitive fees and schedules. Um, sometimes there's intellectual property clauses in which. Uh, you know, ownership. Like if you of would, yeah, like if you were to develop something in the midst of, you know, working on a project, then there's some guidelines to handle that. It, it, exactly. So, you know, we, our product is mostly um, um, drawings and, and specifications, which, you know, we create on, on software, uh, BIM software or CAD software. And you know, sometimes there's a question of who owns that, those drawings afterwards. Typically the, the prime or the owner will own it, but there's kind of some 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 stipulations in there about um, about how those documents are transferred and who owns those documents, uh, which could get a little sticky. Um, typically, we're we're paid when paid, um, which I don't have a problem with. Which basically is, you know, if you're working with a prime contractor, my opinion of it is, you know, I work with you know pretty pretty decent <laughs> prime contractors, pretty good prime prime contractors who treated us, you know, fairly, um, more than fairly over, over the years. So, you know, I know when they get paid, they'll pay us. And, um, you know, some smaller firms may not be financially stable enough to kind of wait the 30, 60, 90 days sometimes <laughs> to get a check mm. from the, wow. yeah, from the municipality, which has hurt a lot of small firms, um, waiting on, 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 on those, on those payments. And some of the municipalities try to say, okay, we'll get you paid in, in, 30, in 45 days, but that, that very rarely happens. But um, a good contract, you know, the promise that, hey, we'll pay you within five days after we get paid, you know. Um, so those are just a few of the key elements in, in a subcontract that I look for um, to, to be fair in a good contract. Gotcha. Would you ever consider, and I, and I don't, I'm, I'm learning a lot about your role with ME. You know, I, I actually thought you were the 100% owner, like the owner of the firm. I, I am. Um, oh, so, so you're the owner of the ME part, just not the prime. Yeah, so I'm the owner of ME oh. Cube Engineering. And so, mm -hmm. you know, okay. we gotcha. are growing into becoming prime, a prime, you know, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, but that, again, it, it takes time and, it, you know, there's a lot of money, upfront money you have to put into to marketing and, and, and going and putting the package together. Um, and sometimes there's a lot of, you know, staff you need to manage these projects. Um, gotcha. you know, we, we definitely manage our, our primes on, on, on smaller projects, um, definitely commercial uh, private projects. We, we serve as a prime on all the time. I do a lot of work at Morehouse and, you know, we're doing some, some, some church facilities and, and even some, uh, some work for Tesla that we're, you know, the prime contractor on for, as far as uh, nice. the engineering side. Right. Um, okay. But many of the municipality projects are, are, are larger and take a lot more management. Um, and so typically the, the larger firms get, get those projects. Um, like I said, city of Atlanta, you know, does a lot of work to help, uh, promote um, minority businesses, smaller smaller businesses to become primes. Uh, like at the airport, there's a lot of work at the airport, and so they they had a program. I have a program in which they set aside projects under five million dollars, and they basically say you have to be under this size of revenue for a company, so smaller businesses, to be qualified to go after these under five million dollar projects to get you experience as being a prime. You know, on a smaller project. Wow, wow. wow. Yeah, so that's a good okay. opportunity there. Gotcha. What what would be considered a five million dollar project? I know, of course, it's something that's you know would would bring in a lot of revenue uh, once it's done. But what what's considered a a, a five million dollar project in in your world? Yeah, you might get a um, you know, a, a fire station probably fit in that in that under that five million dollar budget. Construction costs are going up. You know higher and higher these days but um right you know, you're probably looking at uh maybe two three thousand you know four thousand square foot facilities uh depending on what it is a small warehouse which doesn't have a lot of you know interior infrastructure um could be a five million dollar project and and typically um you know design fees in that range could be between you know six maybe on a good day ten percent of the the project budget and that would be for the entire design team. That would be for your architects, your uh, MEP engineers, your structural engineers, your, your civil engineers. So on a $5 million project, the budget for design could be up to you know $500,000, which you'll split amongst all of the design professionals. Excellent, excellent. Speaking of your team, right? You know, Jabril had uh, sent me a question. He said, when building your company, what were some of the most important skill sets technical backgrounds and or professional backgrounds that you needed to place around you? Because you mentioned a whole lot of things. You mentioned architecture, structural, right, you know, mechanical. Right. right. And so our, our firm uh, basically self-performs, I would say, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing engineering. And so one of the biggest things that helped me was to find a really good mechanical engineer. Um, so our mechanical uh, engineer is uh, Mufti Lua. And, um, from Morocco and he's been doing this for, you know, 30, 40 years. And so um, he's, you know, definitely super technically sound, uh, you know, very personable, very passionate about what he's, what he, what he does and just a, a, a genuine good guy, you know? And so um, when we go and offer, you know, the MEP package, I got the electrical side covered based on my skill sets and abilities <laughs> and knowing that, you know, Call him Lou has that side totally handled technically. Uh, really gives us a, 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 a edge or a benefit, you know, to be able to confidently offer those services. And then after that, you need a good supporting team. You know, some some um, I would say junior engineers that are, you know, dedicated, uh, understand how meticulous the profession is. So they have to be patient. They have to be dedicated. They have to be detailed. They have to be you know, really willing to learn and, um, and and grow over time in the profession and understand, hey, you know, there's guys who are not degreed, <laughs> who have, yeah. who, who are mechanical designers or electrical designers making, you know, mid six figures or, you know, 150, 130 uh, doing design. So, but that takes time, you know, you have to be in that level, you're pretty much almost hands off by the PE, you know, I could give a designer at that level the project and just, you know, check in with them at, at the last minute just to have a little bit of oversight. 
So, you know, along with the, the senior qualified professionals, you need a good team of, of junior engineers to to help help with production. Got you, got you. Now, I know you, this, this is the black owned engineering firm, you know, and we're, we're taught that, you know, just get the job done. It may not necessarily be with a black person or what have you, but have you been able to find, has, have, has your staff been able to be those that look like you in the majority or like have you been able to find black uh engineers who can who can perform the type of job that you want to see yeah I mean, that's that's the challenge i mean i i like i said went to an hbcu um you know players kappa alpha psi at, at georgia mm -hmm. tech so um that circle of 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 people you know have given me a a, a, a pool albeit very small to pull from. I mean, when you look at the the number of engineers in America in general, and then you kind of bust that down to the four percent that are right, right, black, black. black engineers. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and you bust that down to the less than a percent who are, aren't, you know, working for someone else or who went into a different field. Like you know, a lot of my frat brothers and brothers from Morehouse have engineering degrees and they end up going into music or uh, photography right. or not, not even 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 in, in, in engineering anymore and then you you know break that down to how many engine black engineers get professional licenses um you know and you kind of you're optimistic coming out of school and you see your hbcu so you see all these black people and then you get out here and you realize Wow, you know, I just don't have that pool, that large of a pool to pull from. So in my mind right now, I'm kind of resolved myself to understanding that I am pretty much have to be the guy to give um, black engineers opportunity. Like I, I came uh, back into the office today after going out to a site visit, and there was a young man just in our lobby, and uh, brother Jamal had spent about thirty minutes talking to him. Uh, he's, I think he's like a senior at Fisk University, just kind of walked in and said, hey, you know, can you talk mm -hmm. to me and give me some guidance? And so, wow, wow. Uh, yeah, and so I'm pretty much, you know, have resolved my, myself to, to being that guy to give internships, you know, first job opportunities to brothers and sisters so that we can help, you know, populate this pool of engineers that we can go to. So to answer and your question, a, it's, it's, it's a challenge. And in and, and yeah. and, 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 and the majority firms, the, the white firms have have challenges finding engineers these days. They're swapping engineers between companies or they're calling me. Do I do I know anybody? So it's engineering in general in America, I think, is is uh, I would say suffer, suffering in numbers. And um, so it's a challenge. You know, that, and, and it's a blessing that that young man was even able to find you to sit in your lobby right right <laughs> to be exactly. like you know can you can you give me the guidance uh because fist that's hbcu in tennessee right exactly exactly so that that is extremely impactful because when you when you have the, a black young person whether they're coming out of college or not or they're 17 16 years old walking out their front door they can't say they can't say oh let me just go to the engineering firm and, and get some guidance on how to become an engineer right they yeah. can't do that so no, the they, fact that he was able to find you, yeah, that's that's beautiful, and I'm and I'm glad he was able to um to get the guidance he needed. For sure. Yeah, and I, I definitely understand where where he's coming from. I mean, me coming out of Morehouse and Tech, you know, I was lucky, maybe a year or two after graduating, to to get a a, a job opportunity at a, at a black firm. Um, you know, you mentioned Nesby and some of these other black organizations. You know, with me knowing that I eventually wanted to have a company, I would go to these organizations and just you know, introduce myself to some of these presidents and I kind of got the right, pat on right. the head, like, you know, you'll, you'll get there, young man, you know, right, right now you're not ready. Slow, and, slow your roll, young man. Right. <laughs> you're <laughs> you qualified to speak to me right now, <laughs> brother. So right, like, I understand how that is and just kind of seeing, <laughs> <laughs> seeing these brothers yeah. from afar, like, wow, this brother, you know, actually has an engineering firm in a high rise downtown. I would love to speak to him. And sometimes they say, yeah. you know, it's not, it's not good to meet your heroes. <laughs> yeah, because they'll disappoint right. you. <laughs> Exactly, hey, exactly. Yeah. When I was in um when I was in high school, man, I I, I used to want to just start with the big dogs. Like mm -hmm. I wanted to be with uh and I was to an extent, I did get some opportunities to engage with them. You know, I was my my goal is to eventually become a surgeon. So 
I was around all the, the heart surgeons in Richmond. You know, mm. I was with the the boss of core heart surgeons, the VCU heart surgeons. You know, I wanted to be with everybody. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember somebody telling me, don't put the cart before the horse. You know, mm -hmm. it's good that you want to be there, but still don't don't forget that there's things you have to do to to get there. You can't just be there. If you right. want to be there, you have to qualify yourself to be there. Yeah, you know. Good advice. Now, yeah, and don't mm -hmm. don't get me wrong. You know, seventeen. That was how old am I now? That's, that was over eleven years ago. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it's not it's not that thing. Times have changed because you still need to do these things, but it's a lot easier to access certain information now right? that you may not have to stand next to a heart surgeon in the operating room like you had to in 2011, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. now you can, you can go in variety of places and get certain information, you know? So if you was, you know, let's say you went to name a, name a project in Atlanta. Project like a neighborhood project. Yeah. Like a neighborhood project. Name anyone. Mm. I guess the bluff, maybe the bluff. Okay, let's 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 go with the bluff. Mm -hmm. And you, an engineer, and you want to make you want to recruit twelve young black people into engineering. What would you do? Right there out the bluff. Now we're talking like the lapidated areas, or are you talk just any neighborhood. <laughs> uh, okay, any neighborhood, like you, you know, you go to to the, you know the projects, you know, right. a place where you are, you are talking yeah. about the projects. Okay, right, right. I want to recruit engineers. Mm -hmm. You want you well not recruit them, but you want to recruit them to be interested in engineering, and then eventually they'll oh. do what they got to do to get there. Wow, bro, that's a that's a good question. I, I mean, I I think it it definitely starts young at a young age because once you get you know, most certainly high school, but maybe even latter years in, in elementary school, if you're not knocking out that math, you know, it, it's it's not likely <laughs> you'll be able to, you know, pursue the engineering path. So, um, you know, if I was to recruit in that neighborhood, I would I would try to try to find the math stars. If there were any math stars there, mm. um, you know, young men or women who, you know, their teachers say they really excel in mathematics. And so I would, I would, I would key on those, um, would be my first, you know, target, uh, recruitment class, I guess. Okay. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So honing in on those who are, who are good at math. So Jabril, if you're watching, still watching, bro, you know, I know, I know that speaks volumes to you because Jabril is a math, uh, tutor. Mm -hmm. Uh, he's a, like I was saying in the earlier part of the program, Jabril is a engineer for the U S Navy. So, a lot of his, uh, and I don't know why, I'm not even going to even try to explain this to you because you already know, <laughs> a lot of his work is detailed around math. So uh, so that that's is that really all you would look for or is, or is there anything else in particular? Um, I'm going to sound like a just thought about Deion Sanders' interview where he was, I'm not sure if you saw that, where he talked about the type of family. Club, Club Shay Shay. Was this, yeah, maybe Shay yeah. Shay he talked about you know, <laughs> he would recruit as a as a you know quarterback and who he would recruit as a, a lineman, you know, their family oh, structure. Yeah. <laughs> structure. Oh yeah, that, that was on the pivot. Yeah. Okay, I remember the pivot. That. Yeah. Oh yeah, right, uh, right, right. So I would okay. probably, you know, do something similar, like you know, find the, the young men who who had who had parents that, you know, were were good parents and were supportive and you know were gonna help. Um, make sure they, they got their homework done. Um, so I, I would I would look there, you know, and and you know, kind of try to find young men who and women who, um, you know, who may may be playing sports, who maybe um, you know were um, good athletes in the sense of you know they had a, a good personality and um, respect the coaches. You know, were, were diligent about practice, and you know, didn't complain a lot. You know, just kind of showing some of the the characteristics of somebody who, you know, who um, accepted discipline. You know, and and had a good attitude about you know, um, being being diligent and and and, and honing their skills maybe, um, on on gotcha. a, on a sports field. Okay, all right, yeah, and I'm glad you um. You mentioned the discipline aspect too, because we, uh, 
contrary to popular belief and what they put out on media on on in the media about young black people growing up in the hood you know all of us all of those those young people aren't wild right some of them want to buckle down and study mm -hmm. and even if they are that way they can become more disciplined so that they can pursue the types of fields that we're talking about you know all right. of them really have the potential to, to be whatever it is that they set out to be but there has to be a level of you know, discipline and training so that they can get to that point, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. and studying engineer, hell, hell, you, you come in there as you are, you know, representing your brand and talking about engineering, the things that types of frequencies and conversations that make people perk up, right, when they're talking about certain topics, mm -hmm. you know, so if you come in there and you're talking to a, a, a rambunctious group of young people, young black people, then it may be something that you said it may get all of them to stop. You start right. talking about big money contracts and, and different things like that. They'd be like, hold up, hold up, five million. What you right. mean? <laughs> you That's know, there's, there's opportunity in that. Yeah. You know, so yeah. I appreciate yeah. that. There's some organizations that uh, we participated in, you know, kind of these STEM fests where they mm -hmm. you know, put on a, a couple day event where they have you know, elementary school children from these neighborhoods come out and right. have different presenters who, you know, we built a couple of um, like mousetrap cars or, or electric vehicle charging, charge, charging cars with right, the young right. students, you know, and mm -hmm. you can kind of see from that group um, who has, again, the knack for engineering, who, who really enjoys and asks, you know, asks very good questions. So I'll probably, you know, maybe um, look to participate in an event like that or, you know, I think who, whose whose child even you know asked to participate? You know, in, right. in something like that that was put on by you know some nonprofit organizations in the neighborhood. Right, right. Or you could do you can do like we do with the Final Call newspaper and go door to door and and drop some information or be like, hey, you know, I'm not sure if your child would be interested. It's to hit some information on you know what we do as an engineering firm or STEM Fest or the STEM Files or what have you. Mm -hmm. getting the, that material to them, they may not even get the opportunity to know what the STEM Fest is to be interested in. Right. So sometimes we got to go out and get them and bring it to them. So, you know, we at that 57 minute mark. Um, I, I just first and foremost want to thank you for all the gems that you dropped today, man. We typically don't try to go past the hour. We don't believe in uh five hour long podcast. Right, right. Um, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Got some some content from Jabril real quick. Uh, we talked about the the contracts. All right, so here's something he wanted. Uh, Bro's company would be what you call a subcontractor, which would do specific work under the prime contractor, which does a larger piece or more or more varied aspects of the contractor work. So that's that's a a pivot on uh, what we talked about earlier about being prime and sub. Or yeah, I mean, I think you know we. We wouldn't define ourselves overall as a subcontractor, but we do participate as subcontractors on you know most of our government projects. But like I said bef before, um, we've had a few government contracts where we were the prime, and you know uh, also um, uh, private sector commercial work where we perform as 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 a prime contractor. So um, okay, mm -hmm. gotcha, gotcha. All right, family. Well. You know, this has been another edition of the STEM Files. We had a, a very incredible build um, with our brother Champ. I'm gonna call him Champ from now on. <laughs> um, <laughs> our brother Kevin Champion, president of ME Cube Engineering. Um, I have some things I want to talk to, talk to you about in private, so it won't be okay. tonight, but it'll definitely be uh, before the week is out. Okay. Um, there's some things. So, as I mentioned before, Jabril and I, the STEM Files parent company, Original Man Scientific is a research and development company and we we are looking to put together a few things that are related to research and development in the black community specifically mm -hmm. and uh atlanta is definitely one of our target cities so i'll be reaching out to you about some things regarding that okay um uh, but family uh if you all enjoyed tonight's episode please put some black fists in the comment section um if you want to have our brother back please also put that in the comment section as well we are STEM files serves the voice of STEM talent, black culture. Um, one last thing, bro. Um, 
what are the top three pieces of advice that you would give your younger self before becoming a general contractor, chop contractor with your own engineering firm? Hmm. Um, pieces of advice, I would say, um, you know, I, I would say be patient. You know, I think, uh, and, and not to be complacent, but, you know, just kind of understand it's, it's, a. Uh, it's a marathon and not a sprint. <laughs> so right, you, right. you don't get, uh, you know, over anxious or just, just have, you know, anxiety about, uh, <laughs> about how, <laughs> how fast you're building. Um, and, you know, uh, trying to get to a certain point, you know, so fast. Um, I would also, um, uh, advise myself to understand that, um, you know, it's, it's a lot about relationships. You know, I think as engineers, many of us are introverted, you know, right. um, <laughs> and you just don't realize how much relationships get you projects. And so to be balanced in that sense is is uh, is an asset to really have. So, um, you know, uh, that would be another piece of advice I would give myself. And uh, let's see. Thirdly, hmm, the third piece of advice. Um, I would say, mm, maybe just be balanced in life. I mean, um, you know, I, I spend a lot of time in the, in the office and, uh, <laughs> doing a lot of, a lot of projects, but I think, you know, having a balanced life, you know, gives you more energy to, like I said, to, to run that marathon race. So, you know, if you could fit some more work life balance, uh, into um, what you do, that would be good. I think uh, you know, I, I lost both of my parents, um, my father in 2016 and my mom in 2020, both to cancer. So you kind of, you know, regret missing some of that that family time with, with, with those, you know, very special people in your life. So that work like work life balance will probably, um, you know, go a long way, you know, now that, you know, you've kind of missed out on some of that time. So yes, that's probably I'll be pleased. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Yes, Absolutely. Sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Okay. All right. Well, you dropped some gems, bro. Um, I'm sure the audience is, was well fed and uh, this will be available on YouTube immediately after we are done being live. Um, so right now I'm going to do something called a STEM file speed round, right? Okay. So it's a lightning round questions. You got three seconds to answer each question and they're completely random. It's, hmm. None of them are related to the engineering topic. It's something we like to do to get on, get to know our best and the short our guests in a short amount of time. You ready for it? I guess so. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The first thing you do when you wake up in the morning. Brush my teeth. Okay. Got you. Got you. Hot or cold? Any any requirement? Hot or cold? What? Just 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 I, anything. General, like tea. Oh. You know. Oh, uh, weather wise, I would say hot. Hot. Okay. Got you. Got you. Walking or jogging? Jogging, even though I haven't done much jogging <laughs> lately. <laughs> I used to run, run marathons and do triathlons, but I, I enjoy oh, wow. Wow. jogging and running. You know, it's kind of peaceful and keeps you in shape. So I would say, I would say jogging. Got you. Got you. Professional work or volunteer work? Uh, I would say professional. And I, I had a a mentor who kind of, you know, in college, uh, over at the AU center and I was getting advice from him and he said, you, you may have to pick a lane, you know, um, mm. you can't do all things and be all things at once. And so if you're meant to be an entrepreneur and professional and, and really, you know, excel in that area, you can help and give back, but there has to be somebody who, who, who handles the professional side. And that just was, was who I was and what I chose. I would say professional for me. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Favorite pair of shoes of all time? Pairs of all time. Mm, I had some polo boots in, in college that were pretty fly, so I would say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I ain't seen polo boots in a minute. Right. <laughs> all right. Uh, <laughs> iPhone or Android? I'm an iPhone just by default. You know, got you, got you. I, it's, I get it. I just got on the iPhone bandwagon last year. Matter of fact, this mm -hmm. month will make it a year. So I am, uh, <laughs> I'm no longer in, in any kind of hate to towards iPhone users. I completely mm -hmm. understand everything they were saying to me all these years. Yeah. Um, 
favorite thing to cook? Bean soup. <laughs> okay. Got you, got you. Mm -hmm. uh, favorite song of all time? Mm, favorite song of all time? Yikes, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Can I pass on that one? I don't know. Yeah, yeah you're good, you're good. <laughs> All right. Uh, youth engagement or raising money for a nonprofit? I would say youth engagement. Got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. Yeah. Because if you if if you're doing any real nonprofit work, nine times out of ten you're working with young people. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, the worst job you've ever had. Worst job I've ever had. Uh, probably working at Walmart in the toy department. The toy having department. To, <laughs> having to restock, <laughs> restock those toys every night was. <laughs> It was a challenge. Damn. Damn. Okay. It, it didn't last long. Maybe about two weeks. I was out of there. Man. I got to say, for me, it was five guys, bro. Five guys. five guys. Yeah, I, I did fast. I hated I, yeah, I was on a Whopper board at Burger King for a year, a summer at least. Yeah. It's, just, it's something about fast food, man. It's just the it's the most miserable. And I'm, this isn't knocking anybody's career and what they choose to do in life. But as a teenager in high school, that is the most miserable thing to do. Because you got it's it's just a lot. It's just a lot. The the time to deal with all that is just a lot. Right. All right. So if you were stuck on an island, right, for a year and you could only listen to three albums, what would they be? Three albums. Mm. Man, do I listen to music that much? Uh <laughs> uh, three albums for a year. Um I like some Anita Baker, you know, to kind of okay. calm things down. It's cool. Um, probably an Outkast album. Just name your artist. Yes. Yeah. Of course, uh, you in Atlanta. You got to have yeah, some Outkast. Got, got some outcast. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And uh, let me see. Another artist that I really like. Um, Anita Baker, Outkast. Maybe Lauren Hill. I j just saw her at, uh, you know, um, I think it was. Uh, it was a labor uh, Mother's Day concert that uh, Mary J. Blige put on, so I just got the chance to oh. see her. Yeah. Okay. So she, she came out. Yeah, she came out. You know, she she wasn't late. You know, uh, she performed. <laughs> <laughs> you had to do it like that, man. Yeah, she wasn't late. You know, I think she gave her son an opportunity to to come on stage. I mean, she you know did her live renditions of the, you know, all her most popular songs. So oh, uh, man, I was good to be able to see her live. So yeah. Okay. Got you. So if you could meet any scientist or engineer from the past, who would it, who would it be and why? Mm, maybe like an Imhotep. See see how they built those yes. pyramids. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Hit, man, just give me 20 minutes with that, with that. Right. Just give me 20 minutes. <laughs> exactly. That's all I need. <laughs> 20 minutes in the in the phone. Right. <laughs> so I'm gonna record it. <laughs> all right. Uh let me see. Let me see. If it wasn't for Oh, excuse, excuse. If I wasn't an uh, electrical engineer and general contractor, what would I be? Mm, I was just looking at Jimmy, Jimmy Butler's contract earnings over his 12 years. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me started with the East, man. Oh, Don't get me started man. with the East. I'm so mad at Brooklyn right now, but, it, but it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> all right, so not Brooklyn, uh, the, the Knicks. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> all right, so. um. My name is Kevin Champion, and I am. Mm. I am. Mm. I am. What am I? I am a, a black man seeking peace in this world, and uh, yes, sir. I'll do my part to bring it into fruition. Man, that that peace thing is is a, is a yeah, brother. It's <laughs> it's, it's, it's a requirement. It's, it's, yes, it it's is required for sure. Yep. And, and yep. we we have uh, black men have a hard time have a, a habit of looking for peace in the wrong places. Yeah, you know? yeah, and Pete, right? Yeah, yeah, and, and it's more so trying to help build a hereafter. You know, you know, I think yeah, you can you can have a you can. You know, build your own oasis of peace within your own, you know, little environment. But trying to bring that right. to the masses is 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 what I'm, you know, seeking to do my part in. 
That's what's up, man. We appreciate mm-hmm. that. And how can people learn more about your company? Uh, we do have a website. Um, it is www.mecubedengineering.com. Um, we don't really have that much of a social media presence, but I am on LinkedIn. So uh, maybe gotcha. from the website and LinkedIn, you can contact me there. Okay, bet, bet. And if you and the family, if you you're interested in, in learning more about his company, his the link is in the description. Uh, it's also in the uh, caption if you're watching on Facebook. But family, uh, this has been another edition of the STEM Files, where we highlight the best and the brightest in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics in the black and brown community. Uh, I am your host, one half of your host, Tariq Cardiac. We have the champ with us tonight. Um, This has been a a beautiful build, no pun intended. (laughs) And uh, we look forward to um, seeing you again next week. If you're interested in in learning more about what we do, if you have somebody that you want us to interview uh, who fits the criteria of the program, and we're actually gonna be expanding our criteria very soon, we are live on all social media platforms at the STEM Files on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube, as well as TikTok to Recardiac Jabrain underscore engineer. Family, thank you so much for tuning in. This has been a once again another edition of the STEM Files. Assalamu alaikum. Peace. All right, peace. Believe in these false prophets, I say I bet he lying. Bet he lying. No football, New York City Giants. Girl, dad, rest in peace to Kobe Bryant. When we teaching our babies, we teach them heavy science. Heavy science. Heavy science. Heavy science. Heavy science. When we teaching our women, we teach them heavy science. 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 When we teach men, we teach them heavy